Last week, we went through how I edited this photo. It's a photo of my dog, Nala. We had a good time. We had a lot of fun doing that in Lightroom and going through each step that I was taking to kind of make the photo look the way I wanted it to look. But as promised this week, we are gonna talk about how to take photos of your pets, a few tips, a few things I've learned from doing this so many times, failing a few times, but succeeding, hopefully, a few more times than that. Let's get into it. It's Utah Tuesday. <laughs> Two tutorial Tuesday where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new fresh photography tutorial this week. As with every other week, we're going to be diving into a nice little photography tutorial. And like I mentioned in the intro, it's all about pet photography. Now, this isn't exclusive to dogs. I'm going to talk about specifically dogs because I have dogs, but this would work you know, with a few different touches with cats and with all kinds of other pets as well. We're gonna go through a few different ways that you can actually capture interesting photos of them and things that you need to look out for when photographing your pets, things you wanna maybe try and emphasize or things you wanna try and specifically capture while doing it. First up, let's talk about some of the things that I think are really crucial to getting a good photo of your pet. There's a few ways we can approach this to try and maximize what we can get out of it. The first is we want to realistically be approaching this a little bit like a portrait. A bit like you take a portrait of a person, there are lots of things to take into consideration. If you can make them comfortable, if you can make them happy, and you can put them at ease, it's gonna be much easier to capture that photograph. You can try and go for a staged photo like this one, or like this one, but it's often easier, and to be honest with you, often better, to try and catch either a candid moment or a very real, authentic moment that captures more of their personality. More on that a little bit later on. Things you can do to help with this, I've found is using things like natural light instead of artificial light. Right now I've got a light on me, and that's fine because I'm used to this, but I've noticed specifically with my dog Nala, she doesn't like that. It's very obviously different to how she normally experiences the world, and that puts her on edge. So I don't even try, there's no point. Natural light always works a lot better with her in particular. My other dog doesn't care really that much, but with her in particular, natural light works a lot better. So that means either outdoors, in the sun, a nice cloudy day is great for that diffused soft light. If it's indoors, I wanna try and position her maybe closer to a window. There's lots of different ways of trying to capture that natural light. It doesn't have to be boring natural light. It can be quite directional. You know, if I have her side on to a window, then that natural light is coming in quite nicely onto one side. That can make for quite dramatic lighting. If I do want to use a more, you know, filled light, then I can do it outdoors. That's not a problem at all. But most importantly, having her comfortable and happy not only is better, obviously I don't want her to be unhappy, but I'm also going to end up with a much better photo of her in the end, and she's gonna be much happier. Now that's also true of your camera equipment. You probably don't want to be having big, crazy amounts of gear set up because it can just put them on edge. It's not the natural environment that they're used to. Again, some pets won't mind at all. My other dog doesn't care, literally doesn't care. But Nala does. She doesn't like a big camera in her face. And let's be fair, a lot of us don't like having a big camera in our face. So I try to just have it around to make her comfortable with it. I'm not pointing it directly in her face. So she just gets used to it in general. Whether I'm inside or whether I'm outside, it's something I'll do to try and put her at ease so that once I do start using it to take photos, it doesn't make her super uncomfortable. It's not super different to what we've been doing already and it doesn't just ruin the whole situation. I also tend to shoot in silent mode just because She's not worried about the clicking, but it's just another thing to consider. Some animals won't like that as much. And it's just all about trying to make the animals as comfortable and happy as you possibly can. Lastly, I will always have a bag of training treats nearby just to make my life a lot easier when it comes to actually trying to take the photo. If I wanna get her to sit still, if I wanna get her to move about, if I wanna get her just feeling good, those treats really help with that kind of thing. I also tend to have a tennis ball nearby because she'll fixate on it so I can get a good kind of stare, I can get a good position, I can actually help me to just get her exactly where I want her to be. Now to get your best photos, a lot like with portraits, you want to try and capture a little bit of the personality of the animal. So 
Often the easiest way to start with that is trying to take a photo of them wherever they are happiest, wherever they're most comfortable. So for example, with a dog that might be in their bed, it might be wherever they like hanging out, or it might be out and about running around in the mud, in the grass, on the beach, whatever it might be. Nala loves the beach, so we tend to go down there and I'll take photos of her there because she can run, she can play, she loves playing with the waves, so I can get some action shots of her doing things like that. It doesn't bother her, it's more of her personality. It's more of an actual photo of her doing stuff that she enjoys. So it ends up being a better end result. My other dog much prefers sleeping in his bed. He loves sleeping on soft things. So I'll try and get photos of him doing that because that's his favorite thing. That's his personality. He kind of has two modes. He's chilled out almost all of the time. And other times he's zooming around like crazy. And that's a great opportunity to try and catch both of those as well. I've got loads of photos of him just sleeping or chilling out or just sitting there. In fact, he doesn't mind so much about artificial light, so I even managed to get some kind of studio portrait-esque photos of him. But then I've also got this, which is a photo of him running like crazy, kind of towards me. And that actually brings me to another really important point, which is to focus more on the photo rather than the perfection of all the technical aspects of it. This photo is one of my favorite photos of one of my dogs. I really love it. Technically, it's probably not ideal. I've had to crop that quite a lot, so I've lost quite a lot of detail. But I don't know that that matters because the personality comes through in spades. So I don't know that the technical part of it matters. You know, I love this photo of Nala when she was a puppy, right? But probably if I could retake that photo, I would have just stopped down a little bit. I might have moved the toy, but then, she wants to have a toy and that's part of who she is. And I quite like the shallow depth of field and I don't think it matters that it's perhaps something I would do slightly differently now. I think what matters most is capturing the moment regardless of the technical aspect. Obviously do your best to get the right setup, to get the right settings because it's going to give you the best photo, but you'll never even have that photo if you worry too much about the settings and you focus too much on that side of it. Timing and actually being there so much more important than nailing the shutter speed, the aperture, the ISO. A little bit of extra noise because you used an ISO value a little bit too high is definitely better than missing the photo altogether. Now, in terms of actually capturing the photos, things like composition, things like that, I think a good place to start is to get eye level with your dog. I think generally getting eye level with whatever you're taking a photo of is a great place to start with your composition because it just creates an interesting perspective. It's an interesting level to shoot at because you're now seeing the world at their level and it creates more of a portrait feel. If you take everything from the perspective of you standing up, it can be quite boring. That said, it's a good idea to mix up your angles a little bit. I'll always start eye level, but sometimes I'll get even below my dog to actually get a slight upward kind of perspective at them. It almost gives a bit of a heroic kind of stance. And I will still take photos actually shooting down sometimes as well. You know, sometimes it's about the timing. Sometimes you don't have time to reposition yourself. And like I said before, timing is more important. And also varying your angles up is important as well. One of the most important things when I'm taking photos of my pets is to be patient. Patience is a huge thing in wildlife photography and that's absolutely the case here as well. Sometimes it's about waiting for the right moment. You can't force it. And the more you try to force it, especially when you're talking about animals, the worse things are gonna get and probably the less likely you are to get a nice photo. And you're probably just gonna scare your dog or scare your cat or whatever it might be, or they're gonna leave if it's able to run off like a cat or something like that. And that's not what you want. Ultimately, you want your dog, your pet to be as happy as possible. That's gonna give you the best end result. And sometimes that just means hanging around, waiting, playing a little bit, making them super comfortable. And then when you see that moment, you take it, perfect. But it is about being patient and that is a key part of it. Whether you're gonna be shooting at home, indoors or outdoors, a bit of patience goes a long way. Now those are some tips to get you started with taking photos of your pets, but I'd love to hear if you have any additional tips. Pop them down in the comments because you guys have got some Ooh, some really good tips. And a lot of the time, I'll be honest with you, I learned something as well. So absolutely let me know if you've got any other tips down there because I love taking photos of my pets, specifically my dogs. It has become a real favorite of mine to go and do that. They make for great models. They're always available. Their schedules line up pretty well with mine. So, you know, I appreciate that. A lot. So I'd love to hear any of your tips as well down there. Or if you've had any good experiences or bad experiences photographing pets, let me 
know down in the comments. Otherwise, you can check out a full list of all the kit used for all these photos, for this video, for all of this stuff down in the description. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video because there's new videos all the time. I'll be seeing you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.